Not really. Gonna be too punctual, right? <laughs> Where's all our kids? We had so many kids here last week, now it's like. Yeah. Okay, announcements. Um, coming up. Monday night, Iron Sharpens Iron Bible Study is in the Youth Center. If you're a young believer and you want to be involved in that, starts at, um, there's no time in there. The time is 6.30 for future reference. Um, the rest of the studies are listed there. Good Friday service. This Friday is Good Friday service at 7 o'clock. Uh, Easter egg hunt Saturday in the Fellowship Hall from 9.30 to 12.30. And we're going to have pony rides. Um, yeah, I don't know what we're going to do with the pony rides. We're going to have to ride them around. Uh, down so we can take a pony down the stairs, I guess. Take them upstairs. We got more room up there. Yep. They already got shoes. What do you put sneakers over shoes for? <laughs> Ladies, mug and muffin. You want to talk about that, Tina? The day of the coffee house. Can I make another sure, I think you're going to. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay, so we're planning this ladies' retreat. I've never planned one before, but that's that's not a big deal. I read that you need to get your speaker lined up early. So I called a friend of mine in Florida. That's what I mean, a speaker I'll line I up. Need to call my friend in Florida. No? <laughs> so I called my friend in Florida hoping that she would maybe be up here at this time, but she's not going to be. And she said, Well, I have somebody in mind, um, not someone I've met, but I'll give her a, a contact and see if she's interested. So she texted me back a few minutes later and she said she said yes as long as her schedule doesn't conflict. She's got to check her calendar. So the next morning, the lady called me, and she said she went to check her calendar, and there was something already on there. So we are having the ladies' retreat at the Lighthouse, Lighthouse Christian Camp. She tells me that normally her husband and the other pastor go do a retreat by themselves. This year, for some reason, they decided to include their wives. The retreat is being held at the Lighthouse Christian Camp. She's already going to be there the same day we need her to be there. So that was just amazing. What was even more exciting is while we were trying to have this very short conversation, the phone dropped the call four times. To me, that means the enemy knows that something really awesome is going to happen, and he's already determined to try to waylay anything he can. So I would like to really encourage you, if you are able to come out at all, whether you're able to come and stay the whole time, whether you're able to just come down for a session or two, or you want to come down for the daytime and then go back home to sleep, please come and join us. Thank you, Tina. Good stuff, ladies, good stuff. Um, 
when it's the men's overnight. <laughs> I'm really sure about that. Eh? Uh, coffee house coming up on the 15th. I have flyers here. If somebody would like to help distribute these flyers, uh, need a volunteer. Uh, it's a big part of our outreach ministry here. And uh, I think we got everything come, covered here. I would like to mention it is Palm Sunday, so I will not be continuing on this week on our series on Noah. Next week will be Easter Sunday. There will be no um, sermon on Noah either. Somebody asked me, it's like, I thought Noah was that guy who did the animal thing. We haven't even talked about that yet. <clears throat> we are, we are going to talk about Noah and the animals. We're just going through the prelude of what God did and why God did it, moving up to the point where all the animals go into the ark two by two, uh, except for the unicorns. They ate one of those. <laughs> but uh, So we will be continuing on, not next week, but the following week on Noah. And it's pretty interesting because, uh, and I'm going to talk about this right now, um, even before we start the service, I like to... I like to make comments, commentary, do commentary on current day events from time to time. And so I'm going to do that today with the advent of the mass shooting in Tennessee this past week at a Christian school. Presbyterian Coventry. And I'm going to give you a quick word on that. This transgender thing has just gotten way out of hand, people. Um, they're claiming the fake liberal left-wing news is that the shooter felt, this is what the left-wing fake news is reporting, that the shooter felt there was no other effective way to be seen. No other effective way to be seen except to pull a gun out and shoot three innocent children and three adults who were protecting them. Since when is violence the answer? This was in direct correlation to the state of Tennessee's recent rulings, which put a ban on child gender mutilation, put a direct ban on drag performances for kids. Furthermore, it was a direct attack on Christians and the transgender person. <coughs> it was a direct attack on Christians and the transgender person, a woman, <clears> that <throat> was involved knew exactly who she was targeting. Zeroing in, <coughs> excuse me, zeroing in on the Christian school. So we as people, um, mainly those on the left, and there were some on the right, they failed to look at the real reason for this hate crime, and what did they do to begin yelling and screaming about, let's put a ban on rifles, assault rifles. Let's put a ban on assault rifles. It becomes all about the weapon and not about the heart. You know what? This is what Satan does. He's like, look over here. We're going to put the ban on the assault rifles. In the meantime, over here, nobody's heart has changed. That same devastating situation could have been done with a knife or a car or any other thing. We need to examine the real reason. And the real reason is a country which has turned its back on God and his teachings and part of the expression, but we're giving God the finger. And yet the government thinks for some strange reason that by banning assault rifles, we can change wicked hearts. The scripture teaches otherwise. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, the heart is deceitful above all things and who can know it? The transgender community is only just beginning to target the Christian community. The left has taken and turned this thing around to make it appear as if the shooter is the victim. And the transgender community is turning around, turning this around to make it appear that they are the victims. Ask yourself in your heart, where is all this rhetoric coming from? They are very specifically targeting Christians, no doubt. And if so, what does 
Our President Joe Biden do when he's asked if he believes Christians are being specifically targeted? What does he do? He laughs. Since when do we laugh at crimes, especially when we're innocent children and those protecting them lose their lives over it? Politicians are looking for what people want and what culture wants instead of what God wants. We need to, as God's people, stand on the absolute authority of God's word, and I believe the Bible to be the infallible word of God. And by turning, by turning our back on God, we are sliding farther and farther away from God. We are becoming more violent, lawless, and godless. Just look around, people. It's everywhere. It's everywhere, just like it was in the days of Noah. That's what that scripture talks about, what I preached to Jeremiah 2, 12 and 13 says, Be astonished, O heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the spring of living waters, and they have dug themselves their own cisterns, that cannot hold water. All this craziness and chaos is a direct result of us abandoning God's holy standards. His word tells us in Romans 3, 23, that all have sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. We are no different than anyone else. We do not hate transgenders. We may not agree with that sin. It's called Love the sinner, but hate the sin. We don't hate anybody. We're not called to hate anybody. We're called to love people. You show them the love that Jesus has shown to us. Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Only one person has ever cut the law perfectly, and that's Jesus Christ. His work on the cross fully satisfied the justice of God and his wrath against sin. But we as his people, every one of us, needs to repent and turn to him. Amen? We are being tar targeted, people. We are being targeted and persecuted more and more for living righteously. Isaiah 5.20 says, in the end times, right will become wrong and wrong will become right. That's exactly what we're seeing here. The scripture is playing out before our eyes. We're being targeted for living righteously and for standing up for God. It's said in the scripture the world will hate us because of Jesus. We are prepared here in the event of someone coming into our congregation with the intent to harm, we're, we are prepared with a few people with concealed carry. You guess which two. As God's people, we can cry out to him and we can say, Jesus, you can come and straighten out this world. You can set it right. But think about this more than any other time of the year. What did they do the last time he came? They nailed him to the cross and they crucified him more apparent this time of the year than any other. But I'll guarantee you, he won't be nailed to the cross the next time he comes. Amen? Amen. Let's stand and do the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic Dave, would you open us in prayer, please? Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your goodness. And we thank you, Father, most of all, that you are still on the throne. That you're truly, if you call that bell, the bell's got to ring. If you sound that trumpet, that trumpet's got to go off. And when you call that archangel to come forth, he will come forth because you are God. Amen. Now, Father God, you're invited here today to help us, Lord, get on the right track. And I appreciate so much the pastor's introduction. And I hope that everybody takes what he had to say very seriously and that the word that he talked about today, which is your Bible, would be hid in our heart that we might not sin against thee. Bless us now, Lord. Bless everything that's done. And then, Holy Spirit of God, in your fullness, enter this place like you've never did before. So we may learn, open our hearts, Holy Spirit, that we may receive. Open our hearts, Lord. We need you. We need your word. Right. And we agree in Jesus' holy name that this should be done. Amen and amen. 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 Okay. Any praises? I got one. We had a great euchre night.
Friday night, and if you missed it, you missed out on a great time. And then Saturday, we had a great men's breakfast. We had uh, 25 guys for breakfast, and uh, Pastor Glenn Bloom brought the word. So let's give God a praise for that. What else? What else is God doing? Let's stand up. You can't praise God when you're sitting down. <coughs> Put your hands up in the air and say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, thank you for waking me up today. Thank you for the blood that curses through my body and the blood that was shed on the cross for me. All right, give me hear some praises out there. What's, what's God doing? What's God, God saved me from a horrific truck accident, see? Well, actually, it wasn't quite that. It was it was a truck accident. I put this piece of plywood on my truck and I went in the shop and I came out. Bam! I accidentally walked right into it. So that's why I got this big knot on my head here. I do that all the time. Anybody else? In the back, Jeff. The Lord took care of animalism in my mother's truck and it's gone. Praise God. Leanne's back in the house. That was a good job. Anybody else? Come on, shut it out. Lucy. It was a nice celebration of life with Floyd. It was a great celebration of life. Hallelujah. Nick. Uh, this weekend had a great turnout, like our best weekend yet. All right. All right. Woo. Cindy. Okay, anybody else? We got Dave back up here. We got Dave back up here.
You guys can sit down if you okay. <laughs> Hi kids! I'm Jumpin' Jeffrey! Remember me? I haven't seen you in a while. Smile and Sally's here! How many of you know what today is? Sally, what's today? Do you actually know, Jumpin' Jeffrey, what Palm Sunday is and what it's all about? Is this the Sunday where you bless my palms? Here, go right here, put the money here. No, dummy, it's where Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the donkey, and the people were lay laying palms on the ground and waving them at him. Hey, be careful who you're calling dummy around here. <laughs> Why did they wave palms at him? Throw him on the ground or ride his donkey over. Did they have like a bunch of potholes like we do in Ghetto Creek? They wanted to fill them up? No, Jeffrey, no. They were celebrating that King Jesus was coming to their town, remember? Jesus had done so many wonderful things for the people, and he was so nice to all of them. They all love Jesus. Do you love Jesus, Jeffrey? Yes, I do. He's my savior. That's how they welcome the triumphant king to the town. What's a triumphant king? Has it got something to do with Trump? That means he's a winner. All right. The winner, what did he win, the lottery? He must have bought a winning ticket at Chapman's down the road. <laughs> no, dummy. Oops, sorry. Jesus won the eternal life for us. All I got to say is Jesus is a winner because he died on the cross for my sins. Let's so throw some palms down to pretend we are throwing them down before Jesus, the winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Sunday also means next week is Easter. And we all get a bunch of candy from the Easter Bunny, Sally. Stop, Jeffrey. That's not what Easter is about. I'll see you next Sunday, dummy. Oops, oh. sorry again. You're done. says she doesn't know me. The real me. Oh. One song today. You got puppets, you don't get a whole bunch of songs. <coughs> Yeah. We're kind of hurry, 
Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong. They are weak, but He is strong. Yeah. Great job, kids. Great job. A uh, little extra special treat next week. Um, we could probably thank Floyd for this. Um, the Undertaker came the other day and he looked at that organ and he says, Oh, wow. He played the organ. And so I said, Wow, you can play that organ? And I said, How would you like to come back Easter Sunday and play that? So we're going to have Scott come back Easter Sunday, next Sunday, and play a few songs for us. So Floyd's legacy continues on. Would you like to say anything? Thank you for leaving the flowers, and we get to enjoy them. Maybe, hopefully, we'll get another week out of them. It would be nice to have them here for Easter. <laughs> if we could have um, Kevin and Bill come up for the offering. Kathy does take credit cards, so if you want to pay by credit card. I think we're going to get a cash app pretty soon to her, then more or whatever. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just ask for you to bless the gift and the giver here today, and uh, Lord, that you might um, use this money to further the ministry here in Johnson's Creek at our church, and you have blessed us uh, time and time again, and we are uh, so fortunate, Lord, and we just uh, offer this, offer this, put this offering before you as a sacrifice, Lord, and in an act of worship. In your precious name we pray, amen. amen. Would you like the puppets? <laughs> no. 
a lot of, I'd like to tell you a lot of the kids wanted to see the puppets come back, but I think there was more adults. <laughs> um, I've had some good teachers. Family, family prayer time. Um, any over here? Okay, Carol Hussey, who played the organ. Many people uh, never met Carol, but Carol's in her 80s now. I want to say 83, 84, probably. Yeah, she's 84. Yeah, and anyway, she's played that organ or that pipe organ she from the time she was like, anymore. yeah, from like 12 years old up until she uh, was about 80. And when COVID hit, was when she quit playing here. And so uh, that's why it's kind of neat. We have this old pipe organ, and Scott came in, and Scott didn't only know the or see the organ but recognized scott or uh, carl rademacher who put that organ together and so uh he doesn't just uh, play the organ but he recognizes the heritage that it has here in this building so uh, not that i'm a big fan i'll be honest with you i'm not a big fan of pipe organs but it'll be nice to hear it and uh, it's from the time that i've been here uh, 40 some years and uh it's been here since ever since I started coming here, and uh, so I'm excited to hear it again. Thanks to Floyd. Um, in the back here, Jim. Prayers for Denise, uh, having trouble with her back still, and so continued pain. So we ask that you would continue to pray for Denise and uh, Jeffrey here in the back. Okay, family restoration, salvation, especially for the those who were affected by the bad weather, the tornadoes. Pam, councilman. Michelle and several unexpected, and then for my sister Kim and my niece Amy and Virginia. Okay. Uh, Berlin. Personal prayers for my brother. Okay, back here. Jackie Health and Cattle Versus. Okay. And says. Pray for that pump on my head. I'm not going to waste any more time on that over here. Anybody? Uh, Melinda. Healing prayers for Joe Branch. Okay. Healing for her husband, Joe. My prayers for my friend Sharon. We found out she has a compression fracture in her back and a terrible pain all the time. Okay. Anybody else back here? My oh, heart's clear up here. Lucy. Sick travels from Arkea. She heads back to Wisconsin this morning. Okay. Also, prayer for my sister Juan and her cancer, and my brother Harold and his uh, heart surgery coming up in a couple weeks. And for my daughter in law Victoria, because she has to have a lot of reconstructive surgery on her muscles in her belly and, uh, and her herniation and other things. So we're just praying that the Lord brings it all together so she only has to have one surgery. And also, I'm praying that the Christ in me groups the Christ in you guys. Prayers for my nephew, Alan's going through some new treatment. Okay. Prayers for our nephew with new treatment. Um, Crystal? Um, prayers uh, for the outreach for like Ether Night and uh, Coffee House at when they give us the prayer request that maybe they might uh, come back and testify. And Yep, Jesus in the healing business, and uh, we've seen it here. Go ahead. Peace of Jerusalem. Everybody else, all hearts clear. I want to pray that, uh, Dave. Yes, I want to pray for the two people that I had a chance to speak to on Easter night. They were really hungry for the things of God, and I'm not kidding. They were hungry. They came to me after just hearing me say things about the Lord. The next thing I know, one come, and then the second one, they were hungry. One of them already, one of them already, you have, he has spoken to their heart because he called me. He says, can you shut that guy up? <laughs> you did. I'm, I'm serious. You, you did have an impact on him. And it wasn't, a, I want to say it was in a positive way, too. He's looking to talk to you some more, so that's good. Um, so continue. I, I pray that God would 
speak to our hearts at this time of year, and I think so many times with Easter, it's just like, just another holiday, we all get together and we all have ham, and, and uh, we go through all the motions of the Easter egg hunt and candy and all that, but that the real true meaning of Easter, to me as a Christian, even more so, more important than what Christmas is, the resurrection of Christ. Amen. Amen. So let's go to prayer this morning. And uh, Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you this morning. We approach your th throne of grace, Lord, with confidence. We pray for Robin Hallow's family and the loss of her brother, Tim Miracle, died yesterday suddenly. Father, I pray that you would, uh, uh, your Holy Spirit would, would comfort Robin and the family at this time. And I know that Robin's been through a lot. And Father, we're just asking uh, for you to give her a peace that passes understanding. And Lord, that uh, she might come to know you in a personal way. We pray for Denise Petrie's back. We lift her up and Lord, we ask for her. We speak healing into her. Pray for darling Vanda Walker and her anxiety. We pray for our sister. Carol Hussey and her help. Uh, we pray for Mississippi, Alabama, where the tornadoes hit and have wreaked havoc on there. God, your arm will not be shortened and you are in control. And so uh, we know that you uh, that you love us and, and you love these people. And Father, that you're going to uh, help put this uh, back together. Pray for Kim and her health, Pierkowski. We pray for Amy and for Jackie for their health. Michelle. That situation ongoing, Lord, but God, you are in control. Pray for Pam, many unspoken. Uh, we pray for Joe French for healing, Lord. Not, Joe's not doing well, Mindy's husband, and so we lift him up. We also lift up Mindy, and we ask that you would touch her eyes as she continues back on the road to recovery. We pray for Sharon's back, Lord. Uh, we pray for Wanda and her cancer, Lord, and for Harold, the upcoming surgery, for Victoria and her surgery. We pray for my nephew, Alan, and his treatments, the peace of Jerusalem. And, uh, Lord, we just lift up today uh, this little church on the corner. Our desire is to be used by you, to be your servants, Lord. Um, that everything we say and do, uh, Lord, we glorify you and point people to the cross, Lord. Thank you for loving us, and Father, may we love others around us uh, as you have loved us, with a love that is unconditional. We ask this in your precious name. Jesus, amen and amen.
Let's stand in worship this morning. Is the Lord welcome in this place today? Is he welcome? <coughs> yes. Yes, he is.
listen to this next song is a little new, so bear with us if we screw it up. Um, but it's called Ain't No Grave. There ain't no grave that's gonna hold his body down, right? Amen. Ain't no grave. And it said, when you hear the trumpet sound, he rose right up out of that ground because there ain't no grave that's gonna hold his body down. And then the bridge says, if you walk out of the grave, I'm walking too. Here it is. 
trumpet sound. He rose up out of the ground. Oh, cause there ain't no song, isn't it? <coughs> yeah. That sounds like a Easter Sunday song to me. Yeah. What is Palm Sunday? We're going to talk about what is Palm Sunday. Something I said, it's like all of a sudden this side's empty. Yeah. I know some transferred over here, so. Palm Sunday is the day we remember and celebrate the day Jesus entered Jerusalem as Savior and King. As Jesus rode a donkey into the town of Jerusalem, a large crowd gathered and laid palm branches and their cloaks across the road, giving Jesus royal treatment. The hundreds of people shouted, Hosanna, 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 to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest of heaven. Palm Sunday is a movable holiday that changes yearly based on Lent and the spring equinox. Many churches celebrate Palm Sunday by waving palm branches and singing traditional hymns. These are palm branches right here. We use this to tickle people's chins if I think they're starting to sleep a little bit. 
When this, they're, they're making, a lot of people make crosses out of the palm fronds. Well, this is a triumphal entry. It is Jesus' first step towards death, amen? Matthew 21, 4 tells us this took place to fulfill what was spoke by the prophet saying, say to the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. This prophecy is cited from Zechariah, Old Testament, Isaiah 62, 11, and, and Matthew. We're going to read Matthew 21, 1 through 11. As they approached Jerusalem, and they came to Bethpage, Bethphage, on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. They, this took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and they placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. That's interesting. They laid their coats on the road. They knew that they were amongst royalty. Can you just imagine? They were laying their, their, their cloaks and their coats on the ground and their shawls and whatever else they might have wore back then. And then they were lining it with all these palms. The crowds that went from the trees, the crowds that went ahead of him, uh, they took those tree uh, palms and put them on the ground. And those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the, to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. <coughs> Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? The crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet, from, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. On the hills of Palm Sunday, as we begin this Holy Week, we may be constantly reminded of the significance <coughs> and the value for our lives today. And that's what I prayed about earlier, that we would remember the significance and the value of this in our lives today, this very important day in history when Jesus began his journey towards the cross. <coughs> but we get busy, we get busy. Everything's vying for our time and we're on the hills of spring break, which is really just insane nowadays, nothing but a drunken disorderly time in the South, especially in Florida. And of course, then we have all the upcoming thoughts about Easter headed our way and the real meaning of it may unintentionally get missed amidst all the insanity of this world and everything. Um, I think about like all the hoopla and everything that happens at the Broadway market. N not a bad thing either, not a bad thing, but if it detracts from the cross and what's going on, then I guess I would say it is a bad thing, you know? Um, I would encourage people uh, when they're taking part in these types of quote rituals, and I was raised Catholic, so we did a lot of those types of things. We would take our food, all our food uh, down on, uh, I think it was Good Friday, we get all our food blessed, and I see, <laughs> I see Kelly smiling. You remember doing that when you were younger? My mother, my grandmother, Lord have mercy, you're not gonna eat that polo sausage unless you go down and get it blessed by Father Flannel Mouth or whoever, and so, you got to go down, get your food blessed, and uh, all the hard-boiled eggs and everything else. And we ate some pretty good food back then. Oh, the Chilena, yeah. yeah. Sauerkraut, oh, man, it goes on, pierogies. All good, all good things, kind of things that are near and dear to my heart. Not, not bad things, but I don't know if I really contemplated or realized in my heart what Easter was all about. And so this Palm Sunday, we need to think about here what's going on uh, amidst, in the middle of all this insanity of, the, of this crazy world. And of course, then we got Easter egg hunts. And uh, 
I, I don't ever know how the Easter bunny, and I, I mean, I never seen a bunny lay an egg, so how that all got tied together, I, I'm sure there's some story there. We participate in it, but you know why we participate in it? For the same reason that we would do anything else that when we do that Easter egg hunt, I love to see the kids get all excited and, and they come and we love to meet the parents, they come for breakfast. We had a, if I remember, we had a full house last year, right? What would they have, 100 and, what's that? I've used that as a, yeah, I've used that as a um, analogy. The egg, for those who don't know, represents the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. When somebody says, well, how can the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be all one? Oh, well, I says it's just like, a, just like an egg. You have the shell, and you have the white, and then you have the yolk. Three parts, but yet it's still called an egg. The yolk, the shell, and the uh, white. So um, so that that's a good, good point there. But... Um, I love to see all these kids come and the kids get all excited about getting candy and we, we candy them up, sugar them up pretty good, send them home. But we get to meet a lot of people at our Easter egg hunt, which is another reason that we do it. But also I get to share the Easter story with the kids. I think, how long have I got slotted in there? Half an hour? Okay, I should be able to get it done then. Um, yeah, if I don't get side to maybe I could use puppets even, I don't know. But. Uh, so we, we participate in this, and, uh, but too many people miss the real meaning of Palm Sunday, think it's a time when we make these, these cute little crosses. We got somebody who makes all these cute little crosses every year. It's really neat, and I'm thankful you do that. We make these, it's not just about these cute little crosses on Palm Sunday. The Word of God reveals some great truths about this part of the story. The truths that draw us closer to Christ, reminding us that He alone, He alone is King. Amen. A couple of things I want to mention here this morning is God's Word tells us, the people, cut palm branches and wave. God tells us the people cut palm branches and wave them in the air, and they laid them on the ground before Jesus as He rode into the city. The palm branch represented goodness and victory. When you pick up this palm branch today. And you look at her, you, you take one of these, and quite often Sandy will make one, and I'll hang it in my pickup truck or above my desk at home. And when, when you look at that, I want you to think of what I just said here. Goodness and victory, it was symbolic of the final victory that he would soon have. He would soon fulfill over death. Death was not the victor there. He was the victory. He won the victory on the cross. Amen. I think of 1 Corinthians 15, 55, O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? A verse that I read often at funerals. I don't even remember if I read that verse the other day. It's a verse that I read often at funerals because I want people to know that <coughs> death, where is your victory? There is no victory with death if you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. If you have trusted Jesus as your Savior, there is no victory for death. When the departed knows Jesus as their personal Savior, there were some tears shed the other day with Floyd's funeral. We're going to miss Floyd. I know that Peggy's going to miss him. But you know what? It, many people said to me, great service, Pastor. Great service. Great service. You know what? It's not hard to do a good service for somebody who was a good person, a good man, for someone who knew Jesus Christ as their personal savior. <clears throat> as I said, instead of us worrying about which translation of the Bible we're going to read, how about we worry about which translation of the Bible we're going to live? And Floyd lived th that translation that was real. He was the real deal. Another thing, Jesus chose to ride in on a donkey, which directly fulfilled the Old Testament prophecy. <clears throat> Zechariah 9.9. 9. In biblical times, it was common for kings or important people to arrive on a, arrive on a process, procession riding on a donkey. That was a sign of royalty, of somebody who was very special. Nowadays, they fly in on their private jets and their limos, preaching ecology all the way. The Green New Deal isn't the same as Jesus' Green New Deal back then with the palms. The donkey symbolized peace. So, so those who chose to ride them showed that they came with peaceful intentions, and that's how Jesus came, with peaceful intentions. 
Jesus even reminded them that he was the prince of peace. Rejoice greatly, says Zechariah 9, 9. I want to read that to you. <coughs> Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I could use a drink if somebody would get me a little bit of water. <coughs> You're not afraid of getting my cooties? What? <laughs> I thought she was going to say, do you want me to do the Heimlich remover? Uh, the Heimlich maneuver. She said no. She w she wanted to know if she could do the rest of the sermon if I drop over. When the people shouted Hosanna, they were hailing Christ as King. The word Hosanna actually means save now. That's interesting, isn't it? Save now. And though in their own minds they waited for an earthly king, God had a different way of bringing true salvation to all who would trust Him. They thought they were getting a king. No, I'm good right now. The water, the water works. Uh, Psalm 118, 26. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Romans 10, 9. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. The Bible says that Jesus wept for Jerusalem. And in the midst of the praise of the moment, he knew in his heart, he knew in his heart as he came into Jerusalem that it wouldn't be too long before these same people would turn their backs on him. That they would betray him and that they would crucify him. His heart broke ahead of time with the reality of how much they needed a savior. And just think about how much God's heart probably is still breaking today as we see all this chaos and craziness in the world. Luke 19, 40 and 40, Luke 19, 41 and 42. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it. And he said, e if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now is hidden from your eyes. Palm Sunday reminds us that the reign of Christ is far greater than any man's mind could ever conceive or plan. Man looked for someone to fight their battles in that present day world. They wanted someone who would give them victory over the government at that time. You know what? We're still doing the same thing today. Thousands of years later. We're still looking for a man to fight the battle for us. We're not looking to the cross like we should be. We're still looking for the same thing as they were back then. Not for a savior, but for a man. Someone to fight the battles for him in this lost and dying world. Many think it's Trump. Maybe DeSantis, or maybe you're a sleepy Joe Biden fan. Or maybe a deranged leftover Hillary fan. I don't know. But if you're looking to a political platform to solve a spiritual problem, which is sin, you're missing the boat. You're missing the boat. Our salvation, we, we see, and I know there's a lot of Trump fans around this area, in this church. I'm not going to mention any names, just your initials, Peggy Zeffel and a few others. There's a lot of Trump fans around. You know, we, Melinda French, we would love, a lot of us would love to see him back in there and, and him getting arrested. I, I think he's got a raw deal. I don't think there's any question. He's gotten a raw deal. They've been after him just like they're after Jesus. But you know what? There's a difference. He's not Jesus. He never will be. I'm not looking to a man to solve <coughs> the spiritual problems in this world, and it's sin is where the spiritual problem is. All these things we talked about earlier with the shootings, the mass shootings and the transgender and uh, 37 genders and abortion, and it goes on and on and on. The sin is so rampant in this country. We're not going to solve those problems with a man in the White House. And I'm not saying don't vote and don't be pro-American and patriotic because I strongly encourage that. That's our right as Christians. But the real answer is for us, and using, bearing that in mind, 
that as we vote, uh, as we keep that in mind uh, next year, <coughs> that we would um, put someone there who does have fear and reverence for the Word of God. We talked about that the other day, I believe, at the men's Bible study. Fear and, fear and reverence. Maybe it was the Tuesday night study. Fear and reverence of God. We don't have enough fear and enough reverence for God. So man back then was looking not for a spiritual savior, but they were looking for someone who was going to come in and rally the troops together. But God had the ultimate plan of sending his son to fight the battle, the final battle over death. This is the greatness of why we celebrate Holy Week, amen? Because of Christ's ultimate sacrifice, we can be set free from death. We are not going to solve the problems of this world, people, until we repent and we turn back to the cross and the shed blood of Jesus. That's what we need to do as people of God. We have so much to be grateful for this week. <coughs> you can bet that the enemy knows that, too. You can bet that he knows we have a lot to be grateful for. I get up in the morning. The older I get, just the simple things, simple things mean so much to me. A cup of coffee and sitting down with a word. I, I'll bet it even gets better when you get to be Dave's age. Just getting, instead of a cu cup of coffee and a word, just, just getting up is, just getting up is a, just getting up is a special thing when you're almost 80 years. Are you 80 yet? 80, yeah. Yep, yep. Just, you know, simple things. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. John eleven twenty five. We have so much to be grateful for this week as we walk down that journey. I want you, as we walk down through the week, I want you to think of Jesus' journey to the cross this week. And it, the enemy's going to do everything he can to, to do to distract you from the true meaning of Holy Week. Don't let him win. Keep your eyes on the cross. Keep your eyes vertical, not horizontal. The things of this world are going to pass away. Did you hear that? The things of this whole world are going to pass away. If you don't believe me, ask Floyd Zeffel. The things of this world. What did Floyd take with him? Nothing. His love for Jesus. He didn't take one, one, he didn't take that old pickup truck that sits out there still for sale. He didn't take his lovely wife. He didn't take his gator with him. It's all back here. Don't let the enemy win. Everything around here on this level, it's all temporal. Keep your eyes on the cross, which is vertical. That lasts forever. <coughs> In this holy week, may God direct us towards the things that are eternal. Let's choose to focus on worshiping our Lord, thanking him for the gift of his sacrifice, celebrating the power of his resurrection and the new life that we have in him through Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Melissa, you got another song to close us out with here? Yes, yeah, she does. She can come up with another it's only 20 after. I don't want to quit quite this early. Give us another song here. As we do this last song, um, I, I need a volunteer, Crystal and Kevin, to uh, pass out the palms. You can... Uh, No, just a worship song. Isn't God good? Let's stand up. <coughs> Gotta do a song, Gratitude.
Raise your hand for the blessing as we close. Dear Heavenly Father, watch over us as we go down the highways and the byways. Keep us safe. Let us not forget our focus on you this Palm Sunday as we 
take that journey with you this week and Holy Week. In your precious name we pray, amen.